Welcome to the Original Gangsters Podcast. We're here for another quick hitter edition. I am your host, Scott Bernstein, along with my partner in crime, Jimmy Bucciolato. Hi, everyone. The doctor, hey now, uh, doesn't always join us on these quick hitters, but today he is. We're going to break down uh, the new boss of the Colombo crime family, a uh, news that was broken by Jerry Capace last week at Gangland News. Please like, subscribe, share, uh, spread the word about the Original Gangsters podcast and this YouTube channel. And uh, we're, we're kind of ramping up the content now with some of these quick hitters and touching on the breaking news. And uh, when that global plea in the uh, Colombo bust was made public a couple weeks ago, uh, Jerry and some other reporters uh, reported on the fact that the feds had mis uh, identified the new boss of the Columbos and that for a couple of years they had been naming skinny Teddy Persico as the boss when in reality he is the boss in waiting. He is the heir apparent. The family is his when he comes out of prison uh, after about five years he has to go do for this uh, labor racketeering case that he just pled guilty to. So there was a lot of speculation over the last couple of weeks of, well, if Teddy's not the boss, uh, then who's the boss? And, you know, let's tip a hat. Danza. Right. <laughs> uh, I, I love that. Um, the, the, uh, the, the theme song to, to who's the boss. I don't quit. Yeah. Sorry to uh, around. I think it was called around the bend. So tip the hat to Jerry Capese. He's the OG. Uh, we, we all owe him a debt of gratitude because he started this whole game that we're playing right now. And uh, Jerry rolls out a name that nobody had been talking about. There had been a lot of names uh, that were being bandied about, but according to Jerry and according to some other people on both sides of the law, the new boss of the Colombo crime family is Robert D'Onofrio goes by the nickname, little Robert or little Rob 65 years old um, has been around uh, for, for quite a while. Got his button. Uh, either late 80s, early 90s, was sponsored by Wild Bill Cotolo, very close to Wild Bill, and was initially on the other side of the war. Uh, he was not on the Persico side of the war uh, when it broke out in the 90s. He was uh, aligned with uh, Vic Arena, Patty uh, Amato, and um, Cotolo. And Bill Cotolo. Um, I know he was a part of Cotolo sponsored him and then he was put into patty amato's crew and then at some point in the middle of the war between vic arena and the persicos little rob jumps ship and comes over to the, the the persico side of the war and is involved in a number of murder conspiracies and is busted in 93 and and, and is sentenced to uh he goes away for seven and a half years and he's been yeah, I was free just looking at some of those court documents i think what he got busted what loan sharking and yeah, and then a couple and a bunch of murder conspiracies tied to the war. And I believe one of the murder conspiracies uh, was them trying to kill Wild Bill, who was his mentor. And 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 I and I want to credit Jerry for this. Uh, Jerry mentions in his column, and I've heard other people speak to it that even though he aligned against Cotolo, um, he was heard on wiretaps over the years after Cotolo was eventually killed. Um, how much he admired Wild Bill, how much he loved Wild Bill. Um, so even though he left Wild Bill's camp and jumped into the Persco camp, and probably that move itself paved the way for where we are now, um, where this guy who's been incredibly low-key and off the radar is now uh, leading the family uh, as an acting boss, keeping the seat warm for, for Skinny Teddy. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't, I'm not an expert on the Columbos at all, but I've, I've just heard a couple of things from some people on the street that um, that Persico, when he gets up, because right now I think my understanding of the Columbos are on hard times in terms of like the scale of their operations and, and made members in the family that they're fifth right now in the pecking order. And that Persico is the one guy who seems to have the potential to resuscitate. Everybody, that, loves, that everybody at least in that Borgata. Yeah. Everybody loves and respects Teddy. Um, there were some wiretaps that were uh, put into court documents that Jerry highlighted in his in his reporting, where there were a bunch of these racketeers, high level Colombo administrators, capos, and so forth, talking in the last couple of years 
about Teddy saying Teddy has the power. Once Teddy comes home, everything's going to be, you know, beautiful. And I think the other families like him too. Don't yeah. They? I, I mean, he's a, he's a die as Jerry would say, he's a died in wool gangster. Yeah. Um, has been in and out of prison a lot the last 20 years. Uh, when this comes out, this, this quick hitter comes out, there's also going to be kind of a companion quick hitter where we talk about the 12 years in prison that Skinny Teddy did, or maybe more than that, I'm not sure, but did a nice chunk of time um, because of him ordering a murder from his grandmother's wake uh, being surrounded by state police guards when he was on a, a furlough from prison uh, on state drug charges that he came down to Brooklyn in the summer of 93 and ordered Joey Scopo's murder. Uh, and that murder two months later ended the Colombo mob war. And that, but, but the order came from the wake with him in shackles being surrounded by prison guards. He called his crew in and whispered to them that, that, that they should kill Joey Scopo. The U.S. Marshals didn't weren't weren't privy to that. I mean, how do we how it do we know that was from from informants people that yeah we, yeah from someone that was from people that were at the meeting. Yeah, I see. Uh, they weren't U.S. Marshals. They were state police guards because oh. it was a state. Uh, I, I got uh, case, which makes me think that the guards were yeah were paid <laughs> off. So, uh, so you know, Rob D'Onofrio, a guy he's, he's the he's the snake's um, nephew, right? Teddy Persico is the snake's nephew. Okay. Carmine Persico's I get nephew. Confused with the different yeah, I know. It's Persico's. very, it's very confusing. Um, and then Andy Mush Russo, who had been the acting boss for a long time, uh, just recently died. He was one of the people that was indicted in the 2021 case. The whole administration of the Columbos went down. They all, well, Andy Mush died, but the remaining yeah. uh, defendants all caught pleas this month. And they were all old timers. Yeah, they're all a lot of the, most of them are going to do five years. The underboss, Benji uh, Castellazzo, is going to do, uh, I believe, two or three. But Rob D'Onofrio, just as we finish up, uh, really low key guy. Everybody respects this guy. I've heard that he was somebody that the administ even though he's never risen above soldier, from what I understand, uh, he was being looked at. In, the, in kind of a counselor capacity by the leaders of the family the last five or six years, six, seven years, and uh, Andy Mush um, and, uh, and other people in that Persco Brooklyn camp uh, were, were leaning on, on D'Onofrio for, for advice and for, um, you know, shout out to Cosa Nostra News and Ed Scarpa, who back in 2018, he was writing about Rob D'Onofrio, the first time I'd, 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 and I didn't realize this until I looked it, looked it up. He's the first person to ever mention D'Onofrio as a potential yeah, boss. I was, yeah, it was, yeah, it was a while back. What do you make of just the last thing? Um, again, I, you know, I don't know that much about the Columbos, but from people I talk to in that world, they, they seem to think Joe Waverly is a significant decision maker yeah. in that family. What, what do you, I know you got, you mentioned that, that you've heard that too, and then you got some pushback. Do you have any thoughts on that? I think he's someone that that's in the brain trust right now. Yeah. Uh, he came out of prison in 2020. Teddy Persico came out in 2020. Persico was reindicted in 21. Joe Waverly wasn't. Mm -hmm. um, he's 80. I think he's 82 years old. Mm -hmm. uh, he, another per, uh, person like D'Onofrio, unlike D'Onofrio, he never jumped ship, but he was in the arena Cotolo camp. Uh, Joe, Joe Waverly was. So it's interesting that, you know, 25, 30 years later, uh, it seems like, you know, maybe some bygones can be bygones. Oh, sure. Yeah. Um, Business, not personal. But with Cotolo, we know that, you know, the, the war ended in 93. Cotolo was locked up, came out of prison, uh, or I should say came out of jail. I think he beat the case that, that they had tried to nail him on. Uh, and then the Persicos, you know, rocked him to bed. They named him underboss to get him to, to lower his guard. And then uh, Carmine, the snake's son, who was his acting boss at the time is about to go to prison. And the Persico has made the decision. Hey, if we are all locked up and while Bill's on the street, he's going to take over the family. So they killed yeah. him in May of 99. Yeah. Uh, and, and D'Onofrio again has, has, has been pretty vocal in his, his love for wild Bill, um, even though wild Bill was on the opposite side of this thing. But, but D'Onofrio is obviously incredibly um, trusted and uh, there's a lot of belief in him that he can keep the seat warm for the next five years and that he'll have no designs 
on keeping the job that he'll just hand it over to Teddy. Yeah, I heard him and Teddy are, there's about seven years difference in age, but I, I know they've known each other for a long time. And, uh, not a lot of pictures about this, uh, a lot, not a lot of photos of, of Rob D'Onofrio online. I've seen a couple of them, you know, real low key guy, probably the best, you know, best choice, not a Vic Arena who took power, uh, from, from Carmine, the snake in the eighties. And it went to his head I very quickly. Man. But, uh, yeah, so we just wanted to update you with that. Shout out to Jerry again for breaking the news. Rob D'Onofrio, the new acting boss of the Colombo crime family for Jimmy Bucciolato and Ben behind the glass, Scott Bernstein, OG podcast out.